The podcast you are about to hear is a vendor profile episode for Pitch It, an annual startup competition and accelerator program organized by IT Nation, a ConnectWise community. This year, 26 companies from seven different countries have been selected to participate. Companies go through a 16-week business transformation course led by industry experts and ConnectWise leaders. After the 16 weeks, each company will be required to complete a virtual pitch. From that, judges will select three finalists to present their pitch live at IT Nation Connect in November. The first place winner receives $70,000. Second place winner receives $30,000. Third place, a set of steak knives. This episode is presented by Thread, last year's Pitch It winner. Thread's mission is to help IT service providers deliver service magic. Visit them at itbusinesspodcast.com slash thread. Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast powered by NetAlly. And we are here with a vendor spotlight for the IT Nation Pitch It program. And we have a returning vendor from last year, Samoda, a customer-centric communication platform designed specifically for managed service providers to improve their interaction with end users. And speaking with me today, the founder and CEO, Wayne Kramer. Wayne, how are you? I'm doing great, Marv. Thanks very much for having me today. Well, thank you for coming back. This is your second year being a part of Pitch It. So uh, that means you must have loved it last year. It was awesome last year, uh, meeting everybody, um, all the vendors who were part of the, the program, um, all the mentors, all the great information, um, all the support. I think it's, it's tough to get started um, in any sort of industry, but uh, the way that the channel and everything is set up here and the support that you get from organizations like ConnectWise is phenomenal. It just, it just really helps uh, bring everything together. So all right. it was great. Great. So I have to imagine that when people learned about what your platform does, you probably got a big rush of MSPs to say, hey, how can we take what you have and put it into our stack? Yeah, definitely. Indeed. Um, people people love the idea of um, communicating better with their customer base. Um, it's the one area where I feel that as a, as an industry, we, we probably got a little bit complacent over the last like five to five to eight years. Um, we caught up with, got very caught up with everything that's, that's going on. We're, we're constantly trying to protect our customers, make sure that everybody's up and running. Um, so we've been able to communicate with them at, at, uh, at a different level and a more modern way. Um, definitely is, uh, is a huge, uh, huge factor when people come to talk to us indeed. Okay. So let's go ahead and expand on what I mentioned earlier about what Samoda is for people that do not know who you are and what you do. Give us a quick rundown. Indeed. And uh, just so everybody knows, I personally have over 20 years experience in the MSP space. I'm a previous MSP partner uh, based out of Canada. Uh, we sold the private equity approximately three years ago. Um, and went in there, everything that we would sit down and we brought the lessons that we learned um, from, from that business uh, to what we're building here today within Samoda. Um, high level, when I would sit down with any customers and understand what some of their issues were, um, nine times out of 10, it always came down to communication. And it wasn't a case that we weren't communicating well when it came to uh, major issues or projects or anything like that. It always came down to the fact that it was a day-to-day -day communication. It was the, what's happening with this issue? Why am I having to follow up? And then it was the, the, the over and back and the, the ping pong of trying to solve problems. So that's where we've really created this solution. And we started as a mobile-based solution initially. And we're currently in the process of bringing that to um, the Windows desktop, and we're going to be bringing it to Teams and Slack this year as well. Um, and really just try and give people that overall feeling that they've, they've got a great communication piece with the MSP while bringing the MSP's branding all the way to them. And with the, on the mobile side of things, we actually bring that branding all the way to the tile of the app on their, on their device. So when they get a push notification from us, they see your logo as soon as understand that that information is coming from you. All right. So is this just a communication platform where you're, you know, sending messages back and forth, giving them updates on their tickets, or can it do more? 
Uh, today, we are a fully integrated um, solution into ConnectWise. Uh, we also do Autotask and some other um, PSAs are on the way. Um, basically, we interact directly with the ticket. So we're preventing the MS or the, the technician at the MSP having to spend a lot of time having to communicate over and back. So we synchronize that information back. Um, but what we give um, today to the technician is the ability to be able to get quick uh, communication out to that end user or the person who's currently having the problem. So um, we've got push notifications, which are fully customizable by the MSP. So you can ask questions like, can I reboot your machine? They can quickly turn around and respond quickly from the device to say yes or no. So it makes that whole process a lot easier, a lot less friction, and um, allows people to be able to communicate a lot better. With that, we also onboard your contacts. So if you're bringing on a new organization into your into your um, environment, um, as users log into our system, we now bring them through an onboarding process. So they understand how to get access to support. They get created within your system. And um, so you've got the correct contact information that's in there. Um, by utilizing our solution, they also know straight away, um, you know straight away who that person is, how they need to get support and how to get back to them. Um, and then also we use our push notifications to authenticate end users. Um, so you're able to use that to confirm that they are the person who's at the end of the phone. You can get an interaction over and back that's outside of any other way that any, um, any uh, third party is trying to communicate with them today. Um, and many more features from there. All right. So customers can get that interaction. Um, are they able to create tickets directly from Samoda? 100%. Okay. Um, so you create tickets, you can see what's going on with your tickets, you can see who's assigned to your tickets, you can see the progress of your tickets, you can add notes to your tickets, um, you see the interactions of those push notifications over and back with your tickets, and people are able to add attachments, um, everything that an end user would need to do in relation to their into their tickets. And we've we've really put a focus on making our solution end user focused. Um, they're not big, long... Um, technical documents for to be able to fill out, to be able to understand exactly what's going on, um, to, to be able to get access to some help. Really, our goal is to allow people to be able to create a ticket in under a minute uh, with all the information that an MSP needs so they can get back to work and you can communicate with them on a quick, in, a, in a quick manner as well. Uh, we also help with the triage piece of that ticket too, so we understand the priority. We bring them through a triage process. Um, that, again, makes sense towards the end user, uh, but also brings all the correct information for the MSP on their side so they can quickly understand um, where that falls within their SLAs and how to respond appropriately. All right. I'm not sure if I asked this question last year, but of course, AI is really big this year. So I wanted to ask if there's an AI component to this in, in more clarification. Can you kind of create an AI response so that if a user sends a request for a simple thing like a password reset or a common problem, can they get prompted for, you know, a possible solution? We're currently building that directly into our roadmap today. Um, we anticipate using off-the-shelf AI solutions instead of building uh, AI solution ourselves. I think there's been too many jumps forward on those things, but our goal is really to be able to provide a personalized AI solution to your wards, your end users. Um, I think the industry is going to be hit by two levels of AI. I think one's going to be uh, internal within our MSPs. How do we become more efficient with all the masses of information that are coming our way? And then on the outside for our end users um, and the people who are trying to get support, giving them the ability to have personalized um, support options, exactly like, as you mentioned, password resets. Um, today, we actually do that within our app, not through AI, but just by guiding people and prompting them to say, hey, you selected that you have a password problem. How's about we bring you to the Office 365 website for you to re, uh, to reset your password yourself? And just little things like that to be able to guide them to it so we can understand what truly works and solves their problems for them today. And get them back to work. That's all they want to do. They want to get back to work and solve the problems that they have for their own customers. Um, that's, that's their goal. All right. Uh, you mentioned early on that this is something that can be MSP branded down to the the app level, you said? To the tile level, exactly. We bring the, the, the MSP branding all the way to the tile. So that, that logo, when you look at the app today, 
And so in that way, say, for instance, if you can, we actually, we have the ability to send alerts out to multiples of your customers. Say like if there's a large outage, whether that's weather related, ISP related, big issues that are going on. So you can notify people very quickly and let them know that there's some pieces um, that are being affected within their environment today. And with that, they can see your logo. So they understand as that push notification comes through, that little piece there, they can see that MSP's logo there, not just some sort of um, tailored system that um, may or may not make sense to the end user. They may or may not know what it is. Um, but then also having the ability to bring those push notifications to allow people to interact with them as well. So whether that's yes, no's um, or to get other information that's out there. Um, it's huge. It's one of the it's one of the big features that um, MSPs love today who are currently on the platform. All right. I'm going to ask one of those dig deep type of questions because the push notification sounds fantastic to be able to send out an alert to everybody. I know that some MSPs only have certain users that they would send those alerts to at an organization. Others would just send out everything to every. Can you, you know, granularly control that or because – even in some cases, I'm going to say this gingerly, <laughs> is that, there you go. that some companies don't even allow regular end users to submit a ticket. It's got to go through a manager or an HR department or something first. So are you able to granularly control what gets sent out in, say, a global notification? I, I love that you just asked me this question because <laughs> we're literally releasing this this week. Um, and you, we didn't even set this up, Marvin. I, I, I love this. Um, 100%. So. When we first started describing and creating out our solution here at Samoda, we know that there's three layers of communication that always are, if you're able to, to, um, to do really well at those, you will always have the best relationship with your customers. And it was apparent to us across our years as an MSP here in Ottawa and Canada that we had that best relationship when all those three layers were there. So you got your end user who needs ad hoc support, whether that's from, a change that we've made in the environment, whether that's from just general issues that are happened, they want to know. They kind of want to know that Domino's pizza app version of, is it in progress? Is it in the oven? Is it coming along? I, I know that I didn't just send this into a black hole. And then only for the fact that I pick up the phone and call you that um, I find that there is there's a response. Then you've got that next layer. And that next layer is exactly what you just talked about. That's that person who is, as an MSP, we're contacting all the time. We're asking them, hey, can we reboot these servers in your environment? Or can we bring this application down? Um, there might be other pieces that are we have to confirm that um, do we have the ability to work on this ticket for you? There might be a cost associated or there might be additional software licenses that are there. And then you've got that third level where you've got the, the VIPs, the CEOs, the people who want that element of white label, um, white, uh, white glove um, support that comes directly, um, whether that brings you directly to people within the team or they get a, a kind of a smaller kind of broken down version of what that is. Maybe it's just a microphone for me to scream into to let you know that I've got a problem and I want you to fix it. But yet you get rid of the screams. That scream doesn't arrive. It only just arrives in words. So it makes it a lot easier for the, for the technicians to do it. So, but it still could be in all caps though, right? <laughs> it can be in all caps indeed. But if you think of that middle layer, um, that's what we've just brought our push notifications to now. So now um, a technician, if they get a ticket, they can look and say, hey, I need approval for this ticket. So now I can actually send that push notification, not just to the person who's associated, but to someone else within the organization. They can sign off from that to determine, hey, can I actually work on this? They can get it quickly on their phone, approve, yes. Instead of having that over and back of the, oh, I didn't hear, we didn't get anything back, um, and um just stuff being stuck and not moving forward. It's a it's a major issue. That ping pong is a, is a huge part of the communication problems that we have. Um, but also as well, we got to remember that end user, that person who sits and plays that role in that environment. Um, they are, they're busy as well. They're they're not they're not just that person who was picked just because of the fact that they've got some IT skills and they've got all this free time to do it. They're doing probably a multiple and wearing a multiple different hats within that organization. So having the ability for them to be able to give quick responses back, see what's going on, understand what's happened on the tickets. They get to see a history of the ticket as well. They get to see the history of the approvals on those tickets as too. Um, so they can help guide that moving forward. Um, we're also bringing that to be the VIP um, kind of piece as well. So if you think of if you're working with organizations where particularly law firms is where it actually stemmed from for me, was where you might need to get to the, the main lawyer, but he's or she is going to be 
um, surrounded by people who are supporting them. So you can't actually get through to them today. Right. Um, so you might need to have that secondary person to confirm, hey, can we remote answer the machine? Hey, can we do all these different things? And get those people to be able to be part of that network and go, yep, you can. And then you go. Um, so that's that's really what, what we're trying to do. We're trying to build that communication platform that sits in all of those layers so that every single layer within that customer that you're supporting feels that they're being communicated well, with at the level that they need to be communicated with. All right. Well, sounds like you guys have done a tremendous job of adding stuff on since last year. Uh, I know that uh, MSPs that want to get started, I believe, do you still have the, the one free customer uh, yep. option that – Nice. We do indeed. We're, we're happy to, to jump on, get everything set up. Uh, we fully believe within the solution that we provide today. Um, we provide marketing material as well. So there's how-to guides. Uh, we white love training your technicians, all as part of that one uh, one person free trial. Um, because we know fine well that, um, that those end users are going to love it. Um, and then from there, you're free to deploy that to, uh, to as many customers as you want. All right. I know that you said you're fully integrated with ConnectWise and Autotask. Yep. Does this work for, you know, Yahoo's like me that aren't, you know, using one of those platforms, might be using another, or for a smaller MSP that might not be, not, might, might not be using any ticketing solution, can they still utilize Samoda? So today, for people who don't have a ticketing solution, no, but we are looking to anticipate the ability to have a light ticketing system kind of at that back end to help. Um, just to do the basics for them um, and use use our front end to be able to, to do all those process flows of communication over and back. Uh, 100%, we're open to create um, integrations with as many other um, tools that are out there. We're currently just about to finalize a Zendesk. Um, Freshdesk will be in there. We're also looking at Halo um, and anybody else that's out there um, to, to make sense. We want to, we anticipate Samoda being that front end of communication with your end user. Um, so then that way in time, it doesn't matter what solution you grow to, whether you grow eventually in time from Zendesk to manage or to any of the other tools that are out there, um, that your your customer will always have an end user centric solution um, that you can plug and play and make, uh, make those changes on the back end yourself on the other side. All right. There you have it. Very nice. Wayne, well, uh, thank you very much for spending some time with me again. I, of course, wish you luck the second go around and look to see you in Orlando in November as part of the final three. And, of course, you know, first and second place get money, third place a set of steak I'm knives. For, I'm for the steak knives. That's where I want. <laughs> I like to hear that. Um, all right, Wayne, is there anything else you want to have people know as they go out the door? Of course, Samoda.com, uh, S-Y-M-O-D-A is the website. Yep. Um, you can check me out on LinkedIn. I'm happy to share any of the experiences I've had over the years. Um, but also, I think one thing that I want people to know is that we're building a solution in MSP's hands. We're not just going to come out to you and say, here's... Here's how you do it. Here's how you implement it, and off you go. Um, the relationship with our customers is is very important. We spend a long time within this industry trying to get our customers to trust us, to understand everything we do, um, and we're here to augment that um, so that you can build and retain, uh, maintain that trust with them um, so they understand the value of everything that you're providing to them. Um, and then we want to be able to, to build um, things that just make it make it easier and get your feedback um, and continue to evolve this product. Because I think, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, um, the personalization of AI um, for that end user is going to be not only a great solution for them, but I think in time actually will be a great uh, way for solving all the noise and workloads that come our way. All right. Sounds like a great solution. And I wish you luck going forward. And uh We'll t hope to chat with you soon at the end of the year. Sounds good, Marvin. Thanks very much again for having me. All right, folks, there you have it. Wayne Creamer, Samoda. Check them out. Uh, there will be a link in the show notes. And, of course, they'll be around all summer for the Pitch It program. Thank you for listening to this episode. We'll be back with more vendor spotlights throughout the summer. And, of course, you can always check out the other podcasts that we have. Head over to itbusinesspodcast.com. Select your favorite podcatcher. And listen whenever we release a show. That's going to do it for now. We'll see you later. And until then, holla.